Спортбетском – уникальное место для настоящего геймера. Только здесь возможны ставки на киберспортивные события. Ты знаешь толк в самых популярных играх и готов рисковать? Смотри регулярные трансляции и зарабатывай реальные деньги. И Спортбетском – живой азарт и холодный расчет. And with that, I welcome you once again to Room on Fire, where the blue screen behind me is still a bit broken. But we do have some pretty incredible games for you tonight. So if you're just joining us and you don't know what's going to be happening here, let me go and check out tltv.org, which is the site you should always check if you're wondering what we're going to be doing. So we're covering the SLTV Star Series tonight, and it's going to be Hellraisers versus ESC for the first game. Then we have LDLC versus Nostalgia. Probably going to be a little bit one-sided, but then we go into Titan versus Hellraisers, Fnatic versus Titan, and Fnatic versus Hellraisers. It's going to be a really sick evening of games, and I'm looking forward to it. So thank you for joining us, of course, but luckily I'm not here on my own. So let me see if I can call up Vendetta and Semler, and Semler might be a little bit late, but um, he should be here eventually. In the meantime, we'll switch it over to the game, because that's more fun, isn't it? We shall see. Yeah. Yeah. Are you there, then? Hello. Oh, you I'm are here. there. Yeah. How wonderful. I was just casually muted at the start. It's the best way to start a Skype call. It is. Being muted. Good evening, fine oh. gentlemen. And you're here as well. Damn straight. Things could not get any better. Well, and um, so, you know, we have a pretty long evening ahead of us. Five games in total. The first two kind of consider them a little bit warm-up games. I mean, I'm interested. It seems like ESC has been actually been playing better and better. They've had some pretty decent results against some top teams, but then Hellraisers have been playing much better recently. So I still think it's going to be Hellraisers' turn, and probably LDLC are going to meet Nostalgia, but then we get into the fun part. Then it gets really crazy. We have three top-tier matches after this. Uh, coming up at, I believe, 20. Yeah, 20. So in two hours' time, yeah, Titan Hellraisers. That's going to be insane. Uh, then we have, what, Fnatic Titan, and I think we cap off the night with Fnatic Hellraisers. Exactly. Exactly like, right. That is one hell of a lineup. That's a perfect warm-up for tomorrow night, in fact. <laughs> yeah, if we get tomorrow night, we, of course, have our... Case King of the Hill tournament, uh, called by Alban Foon and everything, and it's going to be amazing. Obviously, we have LDLC, Navi, Titan, and Fnatic, and it's going to be three best of three games coming up tomorrow, starting at six and going on for as long as it takes, and it's going to be quite interesting. So I hope you guys check that out. That's on HLTV.org as well. You can read all about it, and um, hope you guys are going to tune in. I think maybe your microphone, similar has become weird again. Maybe Bugged so out again? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just hopped on it and checked to make sure that the settings hadn't reset themselves again. Again, as they have Skype, oh, you know, there we go. get you. No, all right, no. Well, now I'm just going to have to make it my my getting ready ritual, right? <laughs> so that's a that's a shame. Just decides to swatch to switch out. Okay, uh, have we gone over the groups at all for Star Series? Because I suppose this is going to be. I mean, this is going to be a good match for Hellraisers because if they win this one, that they're going to be at the top of the group first place. So they have six wins, one loss so far. Pretty damn good yeah. record. You're you know, still like, very quiet somehow. Can is there? Did you turn? Uh, Brought it down a little bit too much, but um, let's see. How is this? Is this a little bit better? Uh, yeah, let's see. Try and testing, testing. One, two, one, two. Yeah, it that does sounds sound better, better to me, uh, at least. Hi. Uh, yeah, but I'm not even sure we'll have time. Maybe we can go for the groups uh, before the next game because they're already knifing. They're already getting on the way. Ah, oh, we have an IP for this one. Yes, we do. We also have that. I didn't paste it. I'm so sorry. I'm the worst. <laughs> I that because, I, because I didn't see an IP, I'm like, okay, well, they're still getting on, sir. We got time to talk. All right. Well, let me see if I can find it real quick for you guys, because it is pretty much the same one every time. So, 
But um, I will. I'll do this real quick. I might have to start on my own. There we go. It's the same one almost every day. Uh, okay, perfect. Sorry about that. <clears throat> if people say it's too high, it sounds pretty good to me. Is the volume all right? It seems pretty good to me as well. It doesn't seem any higher than yesterday. But uh, uh, how do you uh, take into consideration the delay? Uh, well, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, we'll what figure it out in the meantime. For now, the game has started, so while you guys connect, I'm just gonna introduce this. It's Hellraisers on the CT side versus ESC on the Terrorist side of Mirage, and we are in a best of one game for the SLTV Star Series Season 10. So welcome to the show, everyone. And it starts off with Angel getting one click, and uh, ESC's down a man. Adrian's gonna take down Minais, and this is not looking good here for the Terrorist side. In fact, they only have two people left, and one of them is gonna get a kill at least, but... Still not exactly an ideal situation. The bomb is making its way to the B bomb site. Might be able to get the bomb down, which would be the best thing in this round so far for ESC. And actually another kill being picked up here with the bomb plant. This could change a lot. Dosha has to stay alive here. Sierra's going to walk in and he does get himself killed. Michu walking right into Dosha. And now it's actually a pretty interesting one on two until he forgets to check the CT spawn. And the round is actually done already. Angel obviously doing the most work here on Hellraisers with that initial double kill. Do you think uh, this was a bit of a mistake? I think this is Hellraiser's maybe not taking their opponents too seriously. Because rotating off of B before you see the bomb, you know, you don't have confirmation that it's going to be a play for A, and yet you pull your defense off of B. That, that's like a textbook mistake. Like, you don't rotate your last guy off of a bomb site without actually seeing the bomb. That that plant could have not happened right there just as easily for ESC had Hellraiser's left a man there. Uh, I'm actually surprised that ESC opted to go so heavily towards A with everyone except the bomb. That, it, was it, was basically the total it was a matchmaking strat. It's like, hey guys, okay, everybody go to that site, and I'm going to take the bomb over to B and cross my fingers and hope they rotate, they over-rotate off. Yeah, but, but that seems kind of like you're giving up on, on the pistol rounds. Now, they do have uh, started out kind of a fancy buy in terms of they've had some people drop AKs for uh, Minai's and uh, Mouse. So they do have AK and head armor on some of them, but... Yeah, it feels like they just conceded the the pistol round. Yeah, a little bit tricky, right? Because, yeah, I mean, if Hellraisers had just stuck, I think that would, that's pretty much it. It would have been much better. But this round's looking very interesting. I mean, two AKs on ESC. They've bought up into three on three. They put the bomb down. And Angel is going to take down a kill. So now it's on Innocent alone. And actually, he's not even going to get anything. Even every time it seems like there's something slightly interesting about to happen, Hellraisers, they just shut it down. But... I mean, I like the idea that they tried this. I think if you're ESC and you're going to play against Hellraisers, you have to throw in something crazy. You can't just play a normal game because they'll definitely win. No, I, I definitely think it's a cool thing to do. And it's... I mean, we've seen other teams do it uh, previously as well. Hellraisers being one of them, actually. Mm -hmm. But what I don't agree with is how they play their pistol, their pistol round. Because that's basically conceding that, like, you're not giving yourself a chance to win that pistol because they were lucky that... They got a few kills in jungle, so it made it out to be a 3v1. Mm. And that's that was the best case scenario they had at that point. Like, most likely it should have been a 4 on one with Manice putting down the bomb. Or Michu, or whoever it was. Yeah. So, and you don't give yourself a big chance to win the pistol round at that point. Oh, Markolov about to be overrun, but backups here pretty quickly. And, you know, they didn't give themselves much of a chance this time either ESC, but they didn't really have a choice. They just had, you know, pistols, no body armor or anything, and they do get shot down. The one killer Markov is all it takes, and that puts us in the fourth round where they're going to be able to buy again. We'll see if they're going to go for something that's a little bit more standard or if they're going to go crazy. Oh, well, already I have the answer to my question. I was curious if Manaz was going to go for it or not. He's actually going for the AWP glass cannon, so he's going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kucher. Who has yeah. Kepler, who has the nades, who has everything going for him right now. Good money. Uh, actually, I spoke too soon. Well, yeah, there's still good money. Looking at it again, on second glance, there is still good money on Hellraiser's side. So they've got plenty going into this. And Kucher will pick up the first kill. I'm a little bit annoyed that Minais didn't try and go for the for the instant peek in there. I mean, he sort of ran up apartments, but that's not quite as quick as trying to take the shot down on slope. You can actually shoot all this way here, but... He kind of just gave up, and he had to spawn for it as well, so you got to consider that. But now, a quick return coming in. Doja goes down, and we are back into a 4-on-4. Four and four. and uh, yes, they've taken up a pretty passive position, really. It doesn't really seem like they had anything in mind prior to getting that opening frag. Or, I guess, not really the opening, but the opener for them. They seem to want to commit towards the B bomb site right now, but Angel and Markov are already in place, so this is going to be hard for uh, the Polish guys. 
Wow, but what a shot from Manaya as he gets the jump on Angel. Now they're actually going to be open for this Markolov. He's waiting on short. One man gets past, and he's only going to get the one kill before Innocent whips around and manages to take out Markolov. So now we're looking at a real round here for ESC. Oh my god, they were all lined up for Markolov. That could have been the most beautiful triple spray down, but he just wasn't quick enough, or they were too quick in return. He also didn't throw the Molotov he had in his hand. He actually just waited, which would have been a great idea if he could have got that triple kill. Now Kucha, very unlikely that he can win this round. He's on 11 HP, and they pretty much know where he is. Grenade will take him down and ESC pick up the fourth round. Very nicely done. <laughs> yeah, I was curious to see if you actually saw, caught that, or what Mark left did. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm positive that that was not him opting not to throw the Malta. He, uh, I could bet your ass, like, you can bet your ass that he was thinking he had thrown it. And it's kind of that weird delay when you're, like, loading up the grenade. Hmm. So it was just too quick about bringing his gun back, and that's pretty much what lost them the round i think because you saw how low all of the esc members were and just two ticks from a molly there could have killed off two person uh, two people from esc yeah well, maybe a little bit unfortunate but at the end of the day it, it uh it works out pretty well for esc and you know minai's last round didn't have any body armor either so it's pretty fortunate that he could get that kill on angel in the beginning i think he could have gone down instantaneously so here in the fifth round, though, they start off trading again, and last time they did that, it worked out pretty well for ESC, and they, this time again, actually, they, they make the trade, and then they switch to the B-bomb side. That seems to be the pattern that we're seeing so far here from the Polish team. And what's working more in their favor this time around is the fact that Doge is all alone. Markolov is posted up more towards the middle area in CPL, so this is going to be all on Doja. To see yeah. how quickly they can rotate through. They do have the smoke down at the end of the platform, so now they are actually managing to get out onto this B site here. It's only going to be Doja who's still crouching at the back of the site. They finally find him, but Doja still gets the point blank and gets two as well. There's a man stuck behind the man now, but this is it. Doja with three. Yeah, and he actually has room to take one more. He even picks up an enemy AK to keep shooting. Michu going to be alone, and Doja does miss that shot. Still a one on three for him, and he's trapped inside this box. And Doja just needs one more. He's going to pick up the AK again and then go to town. Adrian will pick him up from behind, though. But that was a very, very sweet quad kill from Doja. Nicely done. The first kill he got actually in the beginning of the round, but the last three in quick succession, even picking up an AK, was pretty nicely executed. Yeah, really well done by Doja. I still we probably should have went down after getting the first kill, but that Doja comes out of those situations ahead so many times for some reason. It just... Narrowly escapes death time after time. Kucha happy to take the duel. He knows they're all on eco and well now the hunt is definitely on. Angel just rushing into the middle and actually goes down for it. So a bit of a waste here for Hellraisers. And similarly, you were sort of theorizing earlier maybe they weren't exactly respecting their opponents. Well I think this move is a very clear indication that this is just about the frags here for Hellraisers and not about playing the, the long game. No, I'm not, I'm not yeah, exactly. I'm not really convinced. Uh, this is this is definitely Hellraiser's kind of mucking around. I mean, if you looked at Angel there, he was he looked like he was at target practice and warm up. All right, he's like, okay, I'm just gonna stand here. I'm gonna shoot one guy, shoot another guy, and then I run out of bullets. Like if he'd had an M4A4, he would have had all three kills there and gone out clean. But the M4A1 only 20. He ended up running out and got caught. So you know, Hellraiser's like, I think they're just kind of having fun at this point. Uh, ESC, you know, they're they're still in a position where they could potentially get out for a plant, but it's gonna really take an act of God. Yeah, it will, and they are just trying to run in here. Mitchell really wants it, but he's not going to get it. And the last guy falls. Looks like he's almost planking at the end here. Five to one in favor of the uh, the Hellraisers squad right now. What is the what's the plan for ESC? Do you think, man? Well, they did have some pretty decent success with their B push. Obviously, I think that relies heavily on them getting an opening frag, or at least a trade with the Hellraisers, because that for has, at least previously, forced uh, somewhat of a rotation from the CIS team. Well, look at what they're doing. They're just rushing up Catwalk. They're going to take down Angel. That's a very cool push. They had actually smoked their path in. Unfortunately, Dosa does a tremendous amount of damage to two of the players coming in here, and he can actually just kill both of them. There's another one that makes it a double, and there's the triple. Dosha is a monster in this B-bomb side, and now they've given up the bomb, so no chance at all for Minai's. He's going to go down, but... I still want to credit ESC with this strat. It's a, it's a cool idea. Just basically smoking off the whole of the middle, making one long path for yourself. You run through the smoke right into Catwalk. It's still a bit of a crazy strat, but it almost worked. 
I, I like that. it's them adapting to Angel's play. I think they're like, okay, Angel's gonna push out aggressively again. He's gonna be trying to check mid. If we all just YOLO rush him straight up and put two, three guns in his face right away, there's no reason why it couldn't work. So nice play there by ESC adapting to Hellraiser's defense. I think that that kind of push is something we saw a lot more on Mirage CE back in the day because it was faster to smoke off CPL and put down all those smokes in mid from spawn. So you could just instantly rush and do it pretty safely and get onto short without much uh, resistance. So I'm actually surprised to see ESC pull it off. Uh, not that it really worked too well, but it's cool to see them trying something, uh, I guess, out of the ordinary for this map. We'll see if it's going to net them more rounds than, than just the one here, just you're trying that that crazy style. So far it has, you know, it's come close a couple of times, but not close enough, and Minai is going to fail the battle in the middle. Michu going to take the AWP and try and see if he can go for it, but flashes rain in, and Angel, incredibly aggressive, takes down two people and the bomb, and now it sort of feels like Hellraisers are just being unleashed at this point. And yeah, oh, good kill there by Innocent, though, on Markolov, just as the smoke goes down. Innocent manages to spot him out and gets him through it. But Doge, in the meantime, has pushed the apartments, and now, basically, Hellraisers, they're just closing in the net. It's on the a it's on the bomb. They know where Minai's has to go, or rather, where Innocent has to go. So, there there isn't a whole lot of hope for him. He has to just try and catch Angel out, and it's not going to happen. Kutcher and Angel double stack him. In the end, Hellraisers live with four. I, I, what we have to look at now, yeah, this is the thing. If you, I mean, if we take a look at the money at this point, it's gotten completely out of control for Hellraisers. ESC, you know, they're really hoping to just continue to rack up rounds where it's close, where they're managing to kill off two, three members of Hellraisers round after round, so that Hellraisers never really get any money going. But that's that's out the window now. Hellraisers have got bank. Yeah, it's pretty much what it's down to. Now this time they're going to go for a little bit of a quick B push, but actually 50 damage done with from Dosha, and then a headshot to follow it up onto Innocent. So wherever they go right now, ESC, they're just going to run into a lot of pain from Hellraisers, and I think it, it feel like they might be a little bit discouraged at this point. Well, they're running into a bit of a brick wall anywhere they try to push up, and uh, Doja posting up in that aggressive position that we've seen him use over and over again the last few days. And uh, once again, being very successful with it, or yeah, successful. Yeah, this time there is a bit of a backstab going on, but he's gonna go down as well. And now it's down to Minai's and Mouse, and I'm not sure they're gonna be able to do this. At least they'll get a bomb plant this round, which will give them more money to work with. But winning a one-on-three with just like a little and no grenades and the bomb just being down. I mean, if there was a you know not a lot of time left, maybe they could be forced to make a mistake but at this point it's probably not going to happen he does get the first kill here now in a one on two sneaks out and then gets double team dosha with yet another quad kill and currently 14 zero and two this kind of puts my, my plan like in the water at this point i was like okay well all yes you have to do is you know get away from doja like stop going to b just avoid doja if you can but that's that's not an option here doja he comes to you he wants to have a party, you know, he's like, why aren't you guys inviting me? You know, like, he's that kind of guy who, like, kicks the door down and, you know, brings all the friends you don't really want there, like Angel, <laughs> etc., you know? <laughs> like, those is just showing up and wrecking the party and the cops get called. Like, this is not looking good for you to see. No, definitely, especially because Doja is the cops right now in this game, so, you know, <laughs> it's really bad. You can't even call the cops, that'll be him too. Things are not looking good right now for the terrorist side. They are going to try for another A push with having Innocent in the middle, which is generally a pretty good idea. And Angel horribly over-rotating. He's going to get taken down, so smart play here from Innocent. Got to give them credit where that's due. Now Adrian is going to take down another one in return. Markolov still inside the bomb site, And actually, they've lost the bomb here. Minai is coming out of the apartments with a good kill. And Markolov, he might go down. He will go down. And that leaves it up to the monster in a one-on-three. One on three, and he's going through short, but Sparrow is in a great position. He's about to look through window. He should be spotting Doja, and there it is, a freebie. Doja looking towards that A site, seeing if he could pick anybody off. But good positioning there by uh, Sparrow. Nets them the kill, and actually gets the second round on the board here for ESC. ESC, we, we really can't count them out yet. I mean, how many rounds do you think that they need in this half to, to say, okay, you know, this was actually pretty decent? Five, six? I I would say they need six rounds to have a shot yeah. going up against Hellraisers because what we've seen from Hellraisers previously the last few days is that they've had a, obviously they've been good on the CT side but they've been really strong on their T side and they rarely get off to a bad start as well. 
Well, some good entry facts this time. Markolov and Kucha both going down. Markolov's trying to be sneaky in the middle and up in the apartments. It was Kucha going down. Adrian's going to try and see if he can do a little bit better. And Manais is waiting. It's going to be a double kill here for the Polish player. That's actually a pretty good turnaround here. Hellraisers, they had a lot of money, but if they keep losing like this, they might eventually run out. Although for the next round, they can still buy. Dosha has a chance to, to make himself a god here and just kill five people. That's about the best you can say. He's playing it down to a T at this point. Do they? They don't even know he's there. No, ninja. He's gonna ninja it. Do Doza, don't do shoot. Don't shoot, Doza. Just he sneak out. He doesn't have a kit. He does not have a kit. He's gonna be walking up. Look They're real too far away. He's gonna go for the knife. He's gonna get it. And then if he had a kit, he could win the game. He could just defuse, but he doesn't. He's gonna go down to Manice, who gets a triple, but a knife is still a knife. And well, I think that says a lot about this game. Yeah. I mean, at least he brought in as much cash as possible. That's 1500 bucks <laughs> for that one kill. If that's he had a, had a defuse kit, I bet he would have gone all in on that. Yeah, and the worst part is that he's good for it as well. Like, after buying now, he's got $900, and he still doesn't buy a defuse kit, so he apparently he hasn't learned his lesson, but... That, that knife kill, he buys his team two M4A1s off of it, and still has one for himself, right? Yeah. But that's, that's just silly. Like, he just funded the team. Yeah, Man. but he definitely should have had a kit that round. There's no yeah. getting around it. And yeah. that, then it would have been a round win, easily. Yeah. How ridiculous is that? He lets two guys walk past him into CT, and then manages to get the backstab on the guy holding on sight. Just brilliant. Yeah, I think he was definitely contemplating letting that third guy go past him as well, but I guess he figured that he, he would be able to turn in case Doja won for the bomb. Well, Manais does get a good kill in here, but it's... Too little, too late. Already being opened up in the round by Kucher and Angel, who both got a double kill. That's a pretty good opening, if you ask me. Markolov will finish it off. No issue at all. 10 to 3. And so far... I mean, we've seen some good individual aim, I think, coming out from ESC, and they've had they've shown a willingness to try and switch up their style as much as they can. But I I think that the problem we're seeing here is that, that none of these things are enough to bridge the, the massive gap that is between just the individual skill on ESC and Hellraisers at this point. I think that's fairly accurate. We've seen ESC gotten off to pretty good starts in rounds, but a lot of the times they've gotten the advantage in a round, it's because Hellraisers are doing somewhat risky peaks. Like you saw Angel over-rotating the, uh, the round they picked up. Yeah, their second round that mm. they picked up. That was Angel basically just bomb rushing out into mid, jumping from Catwalk. And normally, I, uh, I highly doubt they do that versus, say, Nip. No, so, definitely not. They've probably picked up uh, the edge in some rounds due to kind of headless plays from Hellraisers, but it wouldn't really be Hellraisers if they didn't do that once in a while. <laughs> That's very true. Back to back to square one for them, right? Yeah. Hope hope they don't revert all the way because it's been a real pleasure the last couple of days, as you pointed oh, out yeah. yesterday, just seeing them play a little bit more like a team and little, a little bit less like just a team with five incredible players. Yeah, and, and they're so much better when they do it as well. It's ridiculous how good they can be when they play as a unit. Oh, if they keep playing as a unit, they could probably be the best in the world. That's what it's down to, isn't it? I mean, oh, they definitely just, have the potential. Just on paper, if you look at it, they could become, you know, a team to win a major, basically. I don't yeah. think that would come as a surprise to many. No, definitely Especially not. after their performance at Dreamhack Summer. Oh, no, this was actually a 2-on-3, and now it gets shut down again. Adrian with the triple and Dosha. Some pretty good communication between the two, and, you know, it's a nice feature of this Mirage map. It's actually the way you can shoot from Catwalk all the way into the a bomb side. Dosha, pu you know, putting that to good use and just leaving Adrian to hold on to the a bomb side. In the meantime, 11-3, and, I mean, obviously, ESC buying whatever they can here, which is one Galil and one AWP with no body armor. Michu with the AWP. He's about to take the peak mid. Kuchar is there. No AWP for Kuchar this time, however. He only has the rifle, but then Michu has no Kevlar helmet, so headshot would be great, but Michu strikes first with the AWP and will pick up the first frag. So ESC, once again, they have the entry. Now they, now they just have to stop Doja and Angel and Adrian from ruining their day. Exactly right. Flash into the middle is a pretty interesting flash from Angel, but nobody's there to peek, so just pretty trying to force them back a little bit, but they're not going to be deterred, and Angel will take one down, just hiding in the smoke. And Manais couldn't really know that, unfortunately. He's still floating around here as well. Hellraisers, they're closing in on this. It's now a 4-on-4. Four four. 
And we still have Angel. He's alive in the house. He's going to be looking towards short. And there you go. Catches Innocent off guard. Sparrow's been taken out by Adrian. And now it's Michu. He gets the leg shot midair on Markolov. Markolov now caught in the corner. But then Adrian from CT finds the kills. His teammate. And it falls apart. Mauzinho, the last man alive. <clears throat> yeah. Not exactly an ideal situation. C-Set 75 is pretty good. But it's not that good. And he is going to go down eventually to Angel, who picks up another triple kill and puts himself at 16 kills right behind Doja at 17. But Doja has four deaths, so it's a little bit of a different ratio. Either way, that is the first half here between ESC and Hellraisers. Predictably, Hellraisers, I mean, looking really strong today, which might be good news for those of you who are thinking about betting on CSGO Lounge later. And actually, someone brought this up in the chat, Sam, a very important question for you. Are you ah. wearing the hat for day two for all the Titans games? Because people need to know this if they're betting. No, I'm not wearing the hat. The hat is uh, back at my place right now. So All right, it's time to change your bets, guys. It's up on the shelf. It's up on the shelf. The hat's power will now will play no part in tonight's matches. Unfortunately, for those uh, hoping that was the case, nope. The hat, yeah. the hat stays on the shelf. The hat stays on the shelf until the next major. Is that it? it stays on the shelf until tomorrow night. I have to okay. save the power here. Oh you know? yeah. I can only use it so much. But tomorrow <clears> night we got two French teams. I mean, going up against Navi and Fnatic, like. The, the French teams are going to need a helping hand. Yeah, I so. smell collusion. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I smell. All right, guys, remember to go and visit hltv.org and check out the link that's on top right now, which is our tournament for tomorrow, the Case King of the Hill, cool by Alpen Foon and also by Beat Phoenix helping us out with that one. And, of course, Case King. We're really excited about it. We have four incredible teams. We're going to have three best of three games coming up for you guys tomorrow, so you have to clear your schedule and tune in because it's going to be amazing. It's going to be pretty much all evening and night and way into the morning if we need to. Just We'll never stop casting for as long as we have games. This time though, it's ESC's turn to be on the CT side and Maus is gonna be defending so far over here, but some pretty good smokes have actually pretty much blocked him out of the bomb side. I missed that kill, but I could tell from the gas. And oh God, we got the second one. Minais goes down and Kucha, he wants a little bit more. Oh, that was a thing of beauty, Kucha. All right, now Spiro will find Adrian though through the smoke and CT. Angel's waiting around the corner though. He could catch him if they try and push up through here. And all three members are gathering up in CT for ESC. There's the flash to lead the charge. And Angel takes a bit too much time there. He gets punished. I think they tried to knife him, but actually got killed with a gun instead. Now it's down to the last two members for ESC here. They try and just defuse it straight up, and it's just not going to work. Dosha will pick up a single kill at the end, but Kucha with those two deagles, of course. We missed the first one, and the second one we got to see. It was basically a, a replica of what happened during the first kill, except that he only used one bullet for the first guy. But I like this. Kutra has been doing this the last few days, and that's manning the hell up, going deagle only, no Kevlar, and no just fear. punishing people. And I love that. Uh, it was very smooth, man. It was just like coming around the corner, crouch shot, one bullet. Shot. That was yeah. sick. Hmm. Hi, then. So yeah, definitely not the start ESC needed or wanted. Uh, 13 to 3 for Hellraisers. And this is most likely going to end up being 15 to 3 before ESC even have a shot at getting a proper buy. Although yeah. we will most likely see them force up after this round. They see have. How. Yeah, they've gone for a completely clean buy, right? This old P2000, yeah. P2, sorry, is in USPS. So they haven't invested any money. Yeah, so uh, they're definitely going to yeah, force buy in the, in the upcoming round and just. That's basically all or nothing for them from that point on. It's kind of the only option, right? They have. Oh yeah. For it. If they if they want to win, then obviously you don't aim for ties. No, nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. But I still think. I mean, it sounds weird saying this because we're looking at a, at a 14 to three scoreline here. But I've I've got to say, ESC is a much better team than they were a month ago, basically. Like they have been improving pretty steadily, but when you get put up against Hellraisers, it's maybe a little bit hard to see that improvement. But I actually am, I don't know, I'm pretty impressed by this team overall, I'd say. Yeah, they've definitely improved, but then again, I think Hellraisers have taken huge steps towards becoming a, a much better team as of late. Agreed. Yeah. I, think, I think it could be a totally different picture. If we're looking at the Hellraisers maybe like three months ago, versus this ESC now, it would be a much closer match. But Hellraisers, I mean, hell, Hellraisers after their, their performance on land at DreamHack Summer, you could you could almost put them as being a team, you know, that are living up to their potential of a top four. So this is this is definitely going up against monsters, right? It's ESC going up against Godzilla right now. Yeah, and it's not working out all too well. They do get one kill in return here. The Famasas aren't quite enough, and it's down to just the last two members. Mouse and Minai's left two on four. 
easy pickings right now for Hellraisers. And Markov going to walk up right point blank with the AWP. He's actually not going to get the kill. Goes down, but still does a fair amount of damage. And he's down to 9 HP. And they're both coming around. They're not even going to run to the other bomb site, even though they know. Oh, that's a nice pose. All right. Like one of your French girls, maybe? Okay. That was, I mean, that showed you something else, right? Hellraisers, they had enough time if they wanted to, to go for the B-bomb site. If they were really afraid of anything, they would have switched it up and just gone for the bomb site and planted, but they just went straight for it. Yeah, no fear. Uh, yeah, uh, you could probably say that their confidence is pretty high at this point. That they that they have a few rounds to give up, you know? It's, yeah. It's kind of like, they can, they can, they do have the option to kind of do what they want at this point. And Manai's with a scout will land a headshot on Kutcher. Kutcher has to be careful though, there's a, there's a gun at top of mid right now, and is Markolov coming back to cover it? It seems like it, he's taken a shot and he's missed it, Markolov, but he gets the follow up. And this is pretty much it, isn't it? Three on one now, Minaiz is going to be the only one left with a scout. He does get the body shot on Angel, but that's not enough to take him down. And a 16-3 victory for ESC. So there's really no way to sugarcoat this, they got destroyed, but I still want to give them a little bit of credit. I mean, they showed us... They showed us a willingness to try new things all the time, even in the face of an opponent that was uh, a lot stronger than they were. So, you know, that's what it is.